Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on integrating exponential functions with the natural base e. And here are our three exercises for this video. Now, our textbook presents integration for exponential functions as, as follows here, and there's certainly nothing wrong with this. I don't disagree with this. If you're inclined to do the formal u substitution process, then this is the formula that you're basically utilizing. However, if you're into unchaining when practical, I uh, prefer to look at that formula a little bit differently. Let's just move this over. Let's put over dx times dx, which is a perfectly legal move. I trust you'll agree. And notice that du over dx, that may also be written as u prime, right? So that yields this equation. Integral, indefinite integral of e to the u, u prime dx equals e to the u plus c. And notice a critical difference here is that in the books formula where you have a du, that again, that's more uh, for u, the formal u substitution process. But if you're just unchaining, that's where you leave it as dx. And notice that that is very, that, that is basically our formula that we used not too long ago when we were learning the unchain rule. Notice that in that formula we had little f being anti-derived to big F, but we notice that with e, since e is its own derivative, or e to the u is its own derivative, we just have the same function on both sides of the equation. Okay, so I certainly welcome you to, to do the formal u substitution if that's what you're most comfortable with, but I'm going to do the, the unchaining process in this video. So since we are looking for the derivative of the exponent to be sitting right next to the e to the u term, let's look at the, what the derivative of this exponent would be. It would be negative 1. So let's insert a negative 1 right beside the original integrand. And if we put a negative 1 there, we've got to put it on the outside, right? And now when I anti-derive, remember, this is the the u prime term that goes away during the integration process. So we'll get e to the 3 minus x. Now, since this is a definite integral, we won't bother with the plus c. And instead, we'll evaluate at the endpoints of the integral, 3 and 4. And of course, we're not going to forget this negative 1 hanging out. So let's plug in at this point. If we plug in the 4, we're going to get negative 1, and then e to the 3 minus 4 power, e to the negative 1, minus, if I plug in the 3, we'll get negative 1, e to the 3 minus 3. That's going to be e to the 0 power. And we simplify. So minus negative 1 times e to the 0. e to the 0, of course, is just 1. So we just get 1 with that. And then minus e to the negative 1, that's the same as minus 1 over e. That's about as much as we're going to simplify that. If we wanted to, we could do the common denominator thing and say e over e minus 1 over e and write it that way instead if we prefer. But either way is fine. And of course, definite integrals, very easy to check via calculator. I graph the original function. Here are the window settings that I found good for this particular exercise. I graph it, it looks like that. Go to second, calc. I'll press the number seven on the keypad for integral. And the lower limit, we're going from three to four. So three, enter, four, enter. And we see that tiny little area and we see the area underneath is about 0.632. If I go to second, quit. And then if I go to second and then answer right above the negative sign, I see that that's a, a repeat of our answer. And we're expecting 1 minus 1 over e. So 1 minus 1 over e. And there we go. Answer confirmed. Check. So. Let's go on to the next one. So here we have an indefinite integral. And the first thing that might catch our attention is the fact that it's a fraction here. 
and we might have that U prime over U fresh on our brains. Typically, that's what students uh, think of when they see this. However, notice that if this were U, that U prime would just be 3x squared, and that's not at all close to what we actually have in the numerator. So this doesn't look like it's going to be a U prime over U situation. And as a general rule of thumb, when you've got an exponential function in the integrand, really focus on that first. And think about uh, uh, needing that format that we discussed in the last exercise, where you've got e to the u and then u prime sitting right next to it. So let's ask ourselves, what would u prime be in this case? We might even prefer to rewrite this integral as e to the x to the negative 2 power over x cubed dx. And then when we envision this as our u value, again, that's the same u as, as down here, when we, when we envision that as our u value, then u prime would equal negative 2x to the negative 3. That's the u prime that we want to have sitting right next to the exponential function. And notice that that is consistent with this x cubed down below. So let's rewrite once again. We'll say this is the integral e to the x to the negative 2. With a, um, and that x cubed down below is the same as a x to the negative 3 right here. Now, we didn't want just x to the negative 3. We really want negative 2x to the negative 3. So we'll put negative 2 here and a negative 1 half on the outside to balance it out. And now we have this format that we were, were uh, striving for. So we'll anti-derive, and remember, the u prime will go away in the anti-deriving process. And we are left with e to the x to the negative 2. And I'll go ahead and convert that back to e to the 1 over x squared power. And we'll put the negative 1 half in front, negative 1 half, and of course, plus c. And we put a box around that as our final answer. If we want to check that one, I think I'll, we'll not use the calculator this time. We'll just check by differentiating our answer. So we'll do d over dx of our answer. And that will give us the constant negative 1 half, and then the exponential function itself, e to the 1 over x squared. And then we derive that exponent 1 over x squared, we'll mentally think of it as x to the negative 2 power, in which case when we derive it, we'll get negative 2 x to the negative 3 power. Uh, the derivative of the plus c will just be 0. And we see that the negative 1 half and the negative 2 will just result in a 1 times the e to the 1 over x squared. And then that x to the negative 3 could be put in the denominator as x to the positive 3. And we see that that does indeed match our original integrand. So we'll call this one done. Okay, let's go on to our third exercise. So this indefinite integral could be rather intimidating, but I'm going to give the same advice as I did in the last exercise. Uh, when you see Amongst all these terms, the one that really ought to draw your attention or your focus is the e uh, to, the, to the u power, so to speak. And again, if you think of this uh, exponent as u, the next question you want to ask yourself is what would u prime be? And if we're a little lucky, that u prime will fit in nicely with all this, all this extra stuff out here. So let's define that as u. And if we say that exponent is u, then u prime would be the derivative of secant, which will be secant tangent. So secant 2x, tangent 2x. And according to the chain rule, we would need a 2 there as well, times 2. So let's compare that to the rest of these expressions. And we notice that we are in luck there. It's pretty much the same thing, right? Uh, secant of 2x is the same as 1 over cosine of 2x. And tangent of 2x is the same as sine 2x over cosine 2x. 
So other than this constant right here, everything is accounted for. We've got the cosine times cosine gives us the cosine squared. And then the sine up top, we have the sine up top. Again, all we need to take care of is this, is this 2 over here. So if you buy that argument, let's uh, copy this down here and give ourselves a little room here. We're claiming that if we put a times 2 right here, and of course a 1 half on the outside to balance it out, that we basically got our u prime, that all of this represents u prime. And this over here is our e to the, e to the u power. So we bring up the formula from uh, the earlier exercises. And we once again observe that the, in the integration process, this u prime will essentially go away. And therefore, our final answer will simply be e to the u power, e to the secant 2x, with the 1 half out in front, and of course a plus c. So as far as checking goes, if we derive our, our final answer, we'd get the 1 half times the original exponential function itself, secant 2x, times the derivative of that exponent, again, secant 2x, tangent 2x, and then chain rule says times 2. And of course the plus c has, no, has a derivative of 0. We see that the 1 half and the 2 result in a 1. And then the e secant 2x. Uh, we recall that the original integrand was in terms of sine and cosine. So that secant of 2x will result in a cosine of 2x on the bottom. And then the tangent of 2x will result in a sine 2x, and then another cosine of 2x on the bottom. And that does match the integrand of our original expression. So this one is checked.